All right, <laughs> let's try this again. I started it before and um, it looked like I couldn't start sharing my screen um, without, uh, or like in the middle of the presentation. So, sorry. Um, so today I just, I really wanna go over um, something that's pretty important because, you know, a lot of times I get asked about, I mean, pretty much always I get asked about, you know, what should I eat? What diet should I follow? What food plan should I follow? Um, this, that, and whatever around nutrition, right? And of course, this is a really important question to ask, but, you know, first we really need to ask, how is your gut functioning? Because if you are not absorbing nutrients, if there's increased inflammation in the digestive tracts, um, you know, if there's gut bugs um, or all kinds of stuff that could affect malabsorption, right? The inability to actually absorb the nutrients that you're eating, then it's kind of pointless, right? I mean, it's really, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, you can put a bunch of good food in your body, but then your body is like, well, I don't, I, I mean, I can't really do much with this. So that's one of the reasons why I almost always start with, um, gut health with the, with the people that I work with, with the women that I work with. Um, on top of that, you know, gut health is super important to our hormone balance as well. There's actually bacteria, um, in the gut that help us to metabolize certain hormones like, um, estrogen. So um, today I just want to show you this one test that I run. This is just a, a sample. That's why my name's not on it. It's just their kind of um, sample report that this lab has. Um, but it'll give you a really good idea of, you know, why I run this test and um, the information that I can gather from it. So um, this is something that I do like to run on almost everybody. Um, there's rarely a time that uh, someone will, you know, not get this test run. And I run this test on myself every year, um, regardless of travel plans or anything else. It's just a really good place to start, especially since in naturopathic medicine, you know, we have a saying that, um, you know, all disease starts and ends in the gut. So if there's an imbalance in the gut, you can sure as heck expect um, a, an issue or symptoms or a syndrome or a condition down the line. Um, um, if it's not addressed. So the first section here, um, you can see a, it, this tests a bunch of different pathogens. So this first section, the, bath, the bacterial pathogens here are kind of the big ones, you know, like the ones that cause really bad diarrhea. Um, you know, they can cause bloody diarrhea, all kinds of not so good stuff, right? So um, this is kind of ruling out the big guys. Um, sometimes I see stuff come on here, um, not that frequently. I have seen a few C. difficiles, um, and what else have I seen on here? I think I've seen salmonella on here as well. Um, and then we've got path a parasitic pathogens, so um, cryptosporidium, and tamida, histolytica, giardia. So those are kind of things I think about, you know, contaminated water, things like that. Um, viral pathogens. So sometimes this is important. Um, I don't know of any other stool test that actually tests for viral pathogens. You don't typically think about viruses residing in the gut, um, but they can also cause a lot of inflammation and further dysbiosis or a further imbalance in the gut flora that's going to affect um, how you sort of process your nutrients um, and a lot of other aspects there. So um, H. pylori, um, you may or may not be familiar with this one. So H. pylori is typically a bacteria that resides in the stomach. And it is a normal bacteria to have, but when there's compromise, when there's inflammation or there's low stomach acid due to stress or other factors, um, H. pylori can overgrow in a sense and cause some issues. So there's different virulence factors that can be associated with different um, symptoms and different conditions, um, you know, stomach ulcers. Um, a lot of times are related to H. pylori. So um, it's good to have that tested regardless of whether or not that you actually have symptoms of or a diagnosis of uh, stomach ulcer. So normal bacteria flora, I really like um, like seeing this measurement. So a lot of other stool samples or stool um, comprehensive stool analysis out there don't 
test a lot of the normal bacterial flora, but it's actually really important because if we have this dysbiosis, again, I keep using this word, um, dysbiosis just means an imbalance of that good, um, it could be good and or bad bacteria. So when we have this imbalance, um, you can see that the um, lactobacillus, the clos uh, clostridium there, those are out of balance. So that's telling me, um, you know, that there is some dysbiosis, which could be a byproduct of some other inflammation that's going on in the gut. Um, in addition, this can give me some really good insight on what type of probiotic to use. So for example, if we had elevated lactobacillus or bifidobacteria, you know, we might not want to you know, give a probiotic that's really high in those species. And a lot of the over-the-counter um, products and probiotics out there are really high in the lactobacillus and bifido. So it, it can be um, really great to personalize that aspect um, of your protocol and your approach. Um, the phylomicrobiota, that's just kind of taking a wider lens view or a more macroscopic view, kind of taking a, a step out. So if you remember, like, I don't know, junior high science, when you're talking about the taxonomy. <laughs> um, this is sort of the broader umbrella. So this kind of gives you a wider lens or a bigger picture of what's going on with that normal bacteria. Um, also, we can see here that there's some opportunistic bacteria that is measured. These are really important guys to measure too because when there is that dysbiosis going on, our gut um, bacteria is really out of balance, which creates an environment that's more, um, I guess, suited to these other bacteria that should not be overgrown. If our bacteria is in balance and we have a really nice variety of bacteria, good bacteria going on, those should actually keep these bacteria in balance and keep those levels really low. So when I see these elevated levels, you can see that Pseudomonas, um, the Staphylococcus, um, the Streptococcus being elevated. You know, I'm thinking about um, this dysbiosis that's going on and that we need to reestablish that good bacteria. We need to use some herbal antimicrobials, herbal antivirals perhaps, that um, kind of help to lessen that load, lessen that stress, and repopulate those good bacteria, right? And you can see that um, potential autoimmune triggers are on this test, which is really, really, really helpful, especially when I have people who um, have a autoimmune diagnosis or we've seen on labs that they're headed towards an autoimmune uh, condition or diagnosis because we can really kind of nip things in the bud by addressing things. You can see the Klebsiella here um, is elevated. And so you just want to make sure that we're taking care of that before a full-blown autoimmune condition is in place. Or if we're working on an autoimmune condition, perhaps we can actually help to remedy or reverse those symptoms by healing this gut. Okay. Um, we also see some fungi and yeast here um, and also viruses again. So the fungi and yeast, you know, most people think about candida. You know, you hear candida diet, anti-candida, da 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 It's always about candida, but there's actually several different um, species that can be present that can cause um, similar symptom pictures and um, similar conditions. So um, having that wider lens or that broader umbrella to look at um, can kind of help to pick up things that might have been overlooked by other tests, whether that's another stool analysis or even a, you know, an immunoglobulin or a food sensitivity test that you might have had. Um, this kind of dials things in much better um, and gives us a better picture of that. And then more sort of pathogens here, we've got parasites. So we've got little protozoa, and then we've also got straight up worms, right? So a lot of times if there is protozoa um, present, we still want to treat for worms. I know that's kind of like squirmy and gross for a lot of people, but it's way, way, way more common um, than you would anticipate. So um, even if worms don't come up on the test, if you have protozoa, sometimes we'll still um, work with the worms there. So back to what I was talking about at the beginning about how well our gut is functioning. So all of these pathogens that we just covered and also the normal bacterial flora that we just covered, those are all going to play a huge role in the level of inflammation and possible leaky gut that's going on in the intestines. Um, those can be sort of the root cause or the culprits that are causing that um, inflammation. Um, but these markers here, these intestinal health mar markers can also give me a really good idea of how, say, your pancreas is functioning. Um, so those elastase markers, um, steatocrit markers, are you 
you digesting your fats? Are you absorbing your fats? Um, you know, is your stool floating? That might mean that you're not actually digesting and absorbing your fats very well. If your elastase, um, you know, is lower than 200, maybe you're not digesting and absorbing your proteins well, okay? Um, GI markers here, these are telling me of some um, detox issues, perhaps the glucose, the beta glucuronidase there. Um, the fecal occult blood could be due to um, several different things. Um, usually if that comes up positive, I do tend to refer out for a colonoscopy. I know not fun, but it's um, always good to just know and be sure and rule out the things um, that we need to, right? Got to be responsible. Um, immune response. So secretory IgA and anti-gliadin IgA. So these are two immune markers that I look at um, telling me kind of how your immune system is functioning in your gut. Um, it's also kind of a good reflection of how your immune system is functioning overall because about 60 to 70 percent of our immune system resides in our digestive tract, right, around our gut. So if that level is really low, which I've seen those levels really, really, really low, that means that your immune system is really taxed. And that could be due to chronic infection in the gut or elsewhere in the body. Um, that could be due to um, toxicity in the body. There's a lot of things that we can potentially rule out, but there are things that we can do to actually boost that secretory IgA back up um, and actually improve the immune system function because your immune system in your gut is super important, right? So if you're eating, um, if you're eating food, right, that's your gut, your stomach acid first is the first line of defense, but also your gut immune system is really, really important to help um, identify and sort of keep out any sort of triggers that should not be entering the system, right? So inflammation, calprotectin, this is one that I look at for uh, specifically large intestine inflammation. Um, sometimes it's a great marker, um, you know, to, to figure out if we've got IBS going on or actual IBD like Crohn's. Um, if this, depending on the level of this, if it's um, quite elevated, we might rule out um, with a colonoscopy just to kind of see what's going on. Um, but other times, I've definitely seen it inflamed just because of, or increased just because of inflammation caused by the dysbiosis and other bugs that were going on in the digestive tract. Um, and then this add-on test here is onulin. Um, this one is the marker that's used to test for leaky gut specifically. So when that's really elevated, um, that's telling me that there's leaky gut going on. And leaky gut basically um, is one of the root causes of autoimmune conditions for sure. When we've got leaky gut, that can cause our immune system to be overactive and confused, which can definitely, definitely be a huge culprit in autoimmune conditions. Um, leaky gut needs to be addressed, and usually I address that with a 5R protocol. Um, and uh, if you want to learn more about that, please reach out. I'd love to chat with you about it. Um, I might even do another Facebook Live if you guys want. That's just based on that 5R protocol because that really helps to heal and seal our gut um, so that we can decrease that inflammation improve our absorption um, of the nutrients that we are eating and also um, just help overall systemic function. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um